Hello and welcome to today's edition of The Man Who Knows Everything. And that is me. I hope you've had a fantastic weekend. So um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, The Man Who Knows Everything is me. And what happens is I am here every weekday at one o'clock and I'm going to give you a topic for you to research stuff about that topic um, for the next day. So... I'm then going to give you 10 facts about that topic. And then um, if you've got one of those facts, you can cross it off your list. And if you've got a fact that I ain't got, then technically you have beaten the man who knows everything. So that's how it works. So on Friday, I gave you the topic of Morse code. And the reason being is today is Morse code day. April 27th is Morse code day. I know. Who knew? So that is our topic. And here are my 10 facts about Morse code. Now, my first fact is more of a kind of overview a bit of what Morse code is if you don't know what it is. So, Morse code is a way of transmitting telegraphic information via two signal destinations. Um, and um, it's through a series of dots and dashes, and they correspond to letters in the alphabet, numbers, and punctuation as well. And when it was first made, um, it was all on a little tape. So there were two machines. At one end, you would press a little button in code and in uh, rhythm, and then that would print out on the other end, and then the person could read that bit of tape, and they would be able to decode your message. And depending on what dots and dashes you used, they would be able to decode it. And when they first put it together, um, they um, developed this code, but that's going to be on fact number two. So fact number one is about what Morse code is. And historians believe <clears throat> that Morse code was the first ever um, digital code. So historians believe that Morse code is the first ever digital code. Fact number two is that it was developed by a man called Samuel F.B. Morse. So that's why it's known as Morse code. But he died with it alone. He worked with a man called Leonard Gale and a man called Alfred Vale, so Leonard Gale, Alfred Vale, and Samuel F. B. Morse are the people that developed Morse code. And when they first put their um, code together in 1837, they based their code on dots and dashes, depending on how often that letter was used in the alphabet. So if it's a letter you use loads, like E, then it would only have a very short code. Whereas if it's a letter you don't use very often, like Z, that code is a little bit longer and a little bit more complicated because they wanted it to be really efficient. So the codes were based on how often the letters appeared in words. Um, so it was much quicker to send your messages. Fact number three is on the 24th of May, 1844. So this is four, uh, no, several years after uh, they uh, developed the code. The first ever Morse code telegraph was sent and as I mentioned earlier on, it was sent on a little tape. So you would have one machine one end and you would put your little message in by doing your rhythmic dots and dashes. And then it would print out the other end and then people would get that tape and they would read the decoded message. They would decode it themselves. However, as it progressed, the machine makes a noise every time it puts a little dot or a dash on the page. And so people were able to decipher the message just by listening to that machine dotting and dashing on the tape because of the noise that it would make so they didn't even have to wait for the tape to print out they could just listen to it and this led to fact number four the fact that morse code was then sent in a variety of different ways so obviously there was the tape version which is the way they intended it in the first place then they started to do it through sound and they can do it through little beeps you could also do it through light so sometimes they would have a torch and they would flash it for short little dots and then they would put it on long 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 for a dash so they were able to do morse code through light as well and it was even used by miners who would tug on a rope and they would do short little tugs for dots and a long tug for dashes. So they were able to communicate under the ground to the people on the surface by pulling on a rope. So Morse code isn't just bits of paper with dots and dashes written on it. It's sound, it's visual with flashing lights, and it could even be rhythmic pulls. So that was fact number four. Fact number five is the influence that Morse code had on society because it completely transformed the lives of journalists and newspaper businesses because they were able to communicate 
news almost instantly over massive distances and so if you were a news reporter in one city normally you would have to um, send your story later and publish it later but they were then able to communicate their stories via morse code via the telegraph and they would get that news instantly so they were hot on the heels of the news hot off the press then fact number six is that it also was really uh influential in World War II because radio tele, uh, telegraphy, radio telegraphy was used and uh, so was electric telegraphy in World War II. And it was used by um, ships using it long range to be able to communicate with each other. Airplanes were communicating with each other as well. And the reason they wanted to use it is they were able to encrypt it. So people couldn't intercept their messages, whereas actually, audio messages over radio waves are a little bit more uh, unstable and insecure so people were able to intercept audio messages whereas the uh, radio telegraphy was harder to intercept so that was fact number six fact number seven is that you might be familiar with the term SOS, meaning that you're in trouble. Well, it doesn't actually stand for anything. A lot of people think it stands for save ourselves, but it no, it's just a really short form of dots and dashes. It was really quick to communicate. So SOS was dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. So it's really easy to send and people would instantly know that that meant that somebody was in trouble. So then SOS became culturally known as being in trouble. It doesn't stand for anything. It was just a really short message they were able to send very quickly. And then people took it on um, in our own language to mean that you're in an emergency. So it's now informally used to mean a crisis, whereas actually it was just designed in the first place because it was a very distinctive sound. And then the next fact is fact number eight. In 1997, the French Navy stopped using Morse code for the very last time. Or they stopped using it. Yeah, they stopped using it. So the last message they ever sent was, calling all, this is our last cry before our eternal silence. So the French Navy sent that Morse coded message for the very last time and then they never used Morse code again. Because obviously technology and science had advanced so much we're able to communicate in much different ways and we're able to encrypt our messages so that other people can't understand them. And the last time Morse code was used commercially was in 1999. But people still know about Morse code. It's still quite a fun thing to do as well. So you can have a little look um, later on about it and maybe come up with your own Morse coded messages, figure out how to spell your name in Morse code. Fact number nine is that, and this is a little bit of trivia. When mobile phones first came out, Text messages were known as SMS messages, and they stood for <coughs> Short Message Service, SMS. And if any of people in your family were old enough um, to have one of the first phones, the text message alert used to be, and that is Morse code for SMS. So those very first kind of massive Nokia phones, when you received a text message, you would get, and that is, Morse code for SMS, short message service. So dot, 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 dash, dash, dot, dot, dot. That was fact number nine. And fact number 10 is also connected to mobile phones and mobile communication. And that is that some phones, so from the Android 5.0 and above, they have got Morse code capabilities. And the reason they have this on their phones is because if you are disabled, and you've got um, limited mobility, you obviously might not have the dexterity in your hands, you might not be able to move your body, but you can still send a text message via Morse code. So if you've got an Android phone 5.0 or above, they've got the capability of sending Morse coded messages and then computers can decipher those messages and also turn them into voice messages as well, which is absolutely incredible. So who'd have thought that something that was invented in 1837 would still be having an impact on people's lives today so those are my 10 facts all about morse code so if you've got those facts on your list make sure you cross them off if you've got a fact that i don't give then get an adult to help you stick it in the comments below and if you've got a topic that you would like to challenge the man who knows everything on then feel free to pop that in the comments as well 
obviously if you're watching this on youtube you can only do it on facebook i'm afraid because we are uploading our live facebook videos and then finally it is no time for me to give you tomorrow's topic and this is inspired by finn one of the boys who's been um who's, people who's been watching uh, it might be a boy could be a girl's name who knows um so one of the people who've been watching our videos and commenting and I believe it was when we were talking about Leonardo da Vinci that he mentioned, or they mentioned, Ada Lovelace. So Ada Lovelace is our topic for tomorrow. So get researching. You might not have never heard of her before, but um, that's what this is designed for. So you can learn 10 facts about Ada Lovelace and the impact that she has had on our lives, just like most has. So do a bit of research in some books you might have a bit of knowledge already or get an adult to help you look over the internet about ada lovelace ada new word l-o-v-e l-a-c-e and i'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock and i'll give you me 10 facts thanks ever so much for joining me stay safe stay home and stay creative and i'll see you tomorrow